Today we have with us Professor Ellen Rupel Shell. Uh, Ellen is a professor here at Boston University at our College of Communications, and we will be talking to her about the future of work. What this uh, crisis has done is it's brought us this natural experiment that has sped up many of the systems that were already in place before the crisis occurred. In the case of uh, white collar workers, um, online work has become the norm. This is a trend that's been with us since the late 1970s, 80s, and now it's imperative. What does that bring us? Um, as you mentioned, Zoom has become a verb. We all have become familiar with it. Um, and the question is, what will this, how this will change our, our working lives in terms of, for example, commuting to work? Many environmentalists think, so, think it would be great if we would no longer commute to work um, or travel for work. The idea of working in teams. Um, many um, uh, people think we overrate the importance of actually working in teams. Now that we are often alone in our homes, um, will this reorient us in a different way? As well, um, white collar workers uh, working from their home are also often doing their own childcare. Uh, the average age of a worker in the United States is about 39, which means many of us have children, some of us have young children in the home while we're working. What does this mean? Well, it confronts us with the fact that we have children, that workers have children. What are we going to demand going forward in terms of childcare as white collar workers? Now let's flip this to the people who are taking care of our children normally, um, the pink and blue collar workers. Uh, the hourly workers. Um, what, what this has shown us is, of course, the importance of these workers in our lives, the value of these workers. We're now seeing how valuable, how vital that, that job really is. Perhaps we should, maybe we will reconsider the importance of these roles going forward and how we um, might want to uh, reward as well as value uh, people who do this kind of very, very important work. Many blue collar workers are not able to stay in the safety of their home, that they have to go out and work in, um, for example, as grocery clerks or um, drugstore clerks, uh, pharmacy clerks. The question is, uh, what about these frontline workers? Uh, they're working, many of them, without protections. We've known this for, for a very long time, but this crisis puts all this into stark relief. What um, changes do you see in work in a post-corona world? So most American workers um, do not have a contract. They certainly do not have tenure. Um, they are employee at will, suppliers of labor, and not much else. Um, we talk a lot about loyalty to our employees, what this uh, virus has put into a stark relief for both white collar and blue collar workers, is that loyalty quickly evaporates as profits decline. So here we are in a crisis situation and untold numbers of Americans, be they white or blue collar workers, are losing their jobs, sometimes their benefits, their health care benefits at the same time, at a time when they need them the most. As this is happening to people, um, not only all over the United States, but all over the world, it's really terrifying and frightening. People are suddenly confronted with the reality that they really don't have very much leverage in their employment situation. What are the type of good things that could come out of uh, this experience if we learn from it? So what I'm hoping that will come out of this is that the employee at will um, doctrine will be reconsidered. We might want to reconsider what we value in terms of work. And I'm very hopeful, I'm very hopeful that this has, has brought us all up short and said, oh my gosh, yes, these are almost human rights. We should have these things. How terrifying to have a family uh, become suddenly unemployed and uninsured. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that we've learned from that and we will start concerning putting in protections. I know that's wishful thinking, but I'm going to wishfully think. <laughs> uh, the flip question, the worst case scenario. The worst thing is that we scramble after fewer and fewer jobs, that the scarcity of work, of jobs, I'm sorry, will lead to um, desperation and people taking less than they deserve. 
that would be the worst possible situation, leading to a decline in, in uh, conditions for workers. That would be the most, for me, very devastating outcome of this. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that won't be the case.